Welcome back to another historical recreation. In this one, we will see how the famous Elizabeth of York, Henry VIII's mother and the first Tudor queen, looked like in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I take portraits and transform them to see how individuals we read about might have looked back in the day. So let's get started. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. And let me know in the comments who you'd like to see in real life. Elizabeth of York was born in 1466 into the Palace of Westminster as the eldest child to King Edward IV of England and his wife, Elizabeth Woodville. This was during the time of the War of the Roses. Her father, a Yorkist, had a direct line to Edward III and a claim to the English throne. The Lancasters, his cousins though, were ruling at the time, and it was his current cousin, King Henry VI, that was on the English throne. So Edward deposed him and became the new Yorkist king, Edward IV. Elizabeth was then born. She was betrothed twice before the age of 10, but both were called off. Her childhood story is really quite dramatic, and it doesn't gain stability until she married Henry VII, and together they ended the War of the Roses. So she was the eldest, and she had a whole bunch of siblings. Two of them were her younger brothers, Edward and Richard. When their father suddenly died, Edward became King Edward V. However, his adult supervisor was his uncle Richard. Uncle Richard was the younger brother to Elizabeth's father, and you can imagine him being kind of jealous that he never got the throne. So he did a whole bunch of maneuvering and locked up his nephews. They were never seen again. Richard said, oh, well, I guess that makes me next in line and king then, and he basically took the crown himself. Elizabeth's mother, Elizabeth Woodville, panicked and took her children. She fled in the middle of the night to Westminster Abbey for sanctuary. In her scramble to take as much as she could, she had to have a hole knocked into the abbey wall to accommodate her possessions. So why did she flee to Westminster Abbey? Well, it was to avoid the wrath of Richard III. Also, the abbey was one of London's sanctuaries, providing a space anyone from a criminal to a poet could enter, but where the crown could not trespass. So there Elizabeth of York was with her mother, waiting for an absolution. She was 17 years old in 1483. By the end of the year, Elizabeth's mother and Henry VII's mother, Lady Margaret Beaufort, had been working hard to align themselves. Henry had a weak claim to the throne, but it would strengthen if he would marry Elizabeth, as that would unite the two houses of York and Lancaster. He also needed to first take the throne. So in December 1483, Henry swore an oath, promising to marry her, and he began his invasion. In the meantime, Elizabeth Woodville left the abbey with her children in March 1484 and reconciled with Richard III. Whether or not she did it for show or to have a resemblance of life, who knows, but it was rumored Richard wanted to marry his niece, Elizabeth of York. However, we know she was promised to Henry. In August 1485, Henry landed in Wales, took on Richard, who had the larger army. However, Richard was betrayed by one of his retainers, and he died in battle. As a result, Henry won and got the throne. We wish the 28-year-old king would have swooped Elizabeth off her feet in his ride of glory. However, he didn't. No, he procrastinated. He actually wanted to rule in his own right instead of ruling through marriage. But he did keep his promise. They needed to make sure it was all official, and they sent letters to Rome for approval, which would have taken many months for the information to get there and back. It was a long wait. Marriage proved successful, and both partners appeared to have slowly fallen in love with each other. January 1486, they got married. Henry was about to turn 29, and she was 19. Eight months after their marriage, their son Arthur was born. She then gave birth to six more children, but only Arthur, Margaret, Henry VIII, and Mary would survive. You can see Margaret, Henry, and Mary's recreation in the links in my description. Henry and Elizabeth's marriage had nevertheless blossomed throughout the uncertainty and upheaval of the previous 18 years. This was a marriage of faithful love, of mutual attraction, affection, and respect, from which the king seems to have drawn great strength. Elizabeth of York did not exercise much political influence as queen due to her strong-minded mother-in-law, Lady Margaret Beaufort, but she was reported to be gentle, kind, and generous to her relations, servants, and benefactors. One report does state that Henry VII chose 
to appoint Elizabeth's choice for a vacant bishopric over his mother's choice, showing Henry's affection for and willingness to listen to Elizabeth. She seems to have had a love of books, patronizing the English painter William Caxton. Elizabeth of York enjoyed music, dancing, and gambling. The last of these was a pastime she shared with her husband. She also kept greyhounds. As queen, Elizabeth made arrangements for the education of her younger children, including the future Henry VIII. She also accompanied her husband on his diplomatic visit to Calais in 1500 to meet with Philip I of Castile, and she corresponded with Queen Isabella I of Castile before their children's marriage. Their eldest Arthur died in April 1502. The news of Arthur's death caused Henry VII to break down in grief, as much in fear for his dynasty as in mourning for his son. Elizabeth comforted him, telling him that he was the only child of his mother, but had survived to become king, that God had left him with a son and two daughters, and that they were both young enough to still have more children. When she returned to her own chambers, however, Elizabeth broke down with grief. Her attendants sent for Henry, who in turn comforted her. In 1503, age 37, she gave birth to her last child, Catherine, who did not survive. In the aftermath, a postpartum infection erupted, and Elizabeth, too, died on her 37th birthday. Her family was devastated, and her death was mourned deeply. According to one biographer, the death of Elizabeth broke the heart of her husband and shattered him. As a result, the Tower of London fell into decline. Elizabeth and Henry were really the last family to use it as an everyday residence. From then on, the tower went into other uses which gained its reputation as the ghostly palace or prison it is today. It is easy to understand that Henry VII did not want the daily reminder of his beloved wife's and eighth child's death that living in the tower would have evoked. Likewise, Henry VIII, who was very close to his mother, needed no reminder of her loss. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more historical recreations, please consider subscribing to my channel. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow and it allows me to continue making more content for you. It's the best way to support me. Let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. I do make a list of all your suggestions and I will see you in the next one.